My name is uh, Pastor Ray Minicon. Um, I'm uh, from the Cubby Cubby people in southeast Queensland on my father's side, and the uh, Gurang Gurang people on my mother's side, which is around the Bundaberg area. I'm uh, a minister here, a pastor here with my wife at uh, St John's Anglican Church with the uh, whole congregation here at St John's. We're trying a different, different model of ministry. And we call our ministry the Scarred Tree Ministries because on this property here at St John's there is a tree, it's, a, it's an ironbark tree, that we believe has been uh, here you know, before or around 1788. And the old people have cut a section out of the tree for, for one of their utensils or uses, either as, as a shield or as a, uh, as a coolamon. And it's the only um, scarred tree in the Sydney CBD area. So it's very special to us and very important to us. And it's here located on St John's Church Yard. So that's why we call ourselves the Scarred Tree Ministries. But it also references also to our people who are very, have been scarred since 1788. So it's got those kind of connotations with it. And I do a lot of, do a lot of work with the stolen generations who are always on the margins there and very, very scarred people. The Bible is tribal. It comes from a tribal group over there in um, the Middle East and that we have this opportunity or invitation to actually look at that particular message from with tribal eyes. We also know that Jesus was a tribal man. He came from the tribe of Judah. And as a tribal man, he also had... Um, totems like our people do and so one of his totems for example was the Lion of Judah or the Lamb of God or he said I am the water of life now that appeals to us because it, or it connects us to that kind of ways of thinking in terms of the tribal ways of thinking because you know me I'm a one of my uh, responsibilities as an indigenous person or as an aboriginal person is custodians of, uh, of water. So water is one of my totems, as well as the koala, as well as the kookaburra. For me, my, that's my grandmother's totem. And uh, in our belief systems, it's the kookaburra that usually sings the world into existence because we're all connected to this total universe here in so many different ways. And one of those ways is through what we call our totems, totem systems. So when we fit all that together, we live not in a disconnected world, we live in a world that is connected to each other. And so the trees and the animals and the stars and the moons and the whole landscape there, the rocks and the mountains, are all part of our family, brothers and sisters and all of that. So we identify with those particular aspects of, uh, of, the, of the landscape and of all living things because of our belief systems, um, which we believe came from what you know, white man calls the dreaming. The loss of all of these beautiful species that are a part of our family uh, has been a part of our pain and a part of our suffering as, as Indigenous peoples. And here we live here in the Sydney Basin here. It's not only the flora and fauna that uh, has been lost here or been transplanted or in so many different ways, but it's also the people themselves, who, the custodians of that particular knowledge. They've also been, um, well, genocide as far as I can see here because they don't exist here. They've all been wiped out. Indigenous theology starts in Genesis 1. Bereshit Elohim, in the beginning, God. And that's a much more better starting point because as you go through, even in the first book of Genesis, you look at the, f the last verse of the first chapter and he says that everything is good, very good. All that he has created is good. It's good for all of us. We, we don't like the word God. We prefer the word creator because when you go back to the beginning, you're going back to your creator, the one who made everything. And it's a better starting point for us. And then once we see that particular uh, telescopic view of the world, we can see that 
everything. Like we, we like Aboriginal people would say, we're all related <laughs> to everything. Every life form is a part of what he created back there in the beginning. And so that's a better starting point for us. The second part of that is that we also know that we have uh, sinned and we have you know, destroyed so much and, uh, uh, of, of this ecosystem that our Creator has given us freely and graciously and lovingly. Um, and that's when you can see in terms of the message that uh, Jesus came to restore, it's not just to save me from my own personal sins, which is so minute in the biggest, in the biggest you know, s scope of things or in the bigger perception of things. He died to save the whole universe. That's a completely, that's not the message that we're getting from our evangelical traditions. It's all about me personally. And it excludes this whole uh, wonderful notions of our, our, um, our global home, our creation, all that God has given us as a gift. And so salvation to me is how do we then not just save ourselves, <laughs> but save the bloomin' planet that we live in, his creation. And we can only do that if we take this invitation that he gave to Job and that he's giving to us, and let's go back to the beginning. And if we can go back into the beginning, we can possibly put things into place. That's a huge big possibility. But the way in which I think the world is going today, uh, this particular voice of the indigenous peoples we know is marginalised, probably won't be heard, like our creator's voice is never heard anyways, even in the church or in any of the other religious uh, institutions or religions on the planet. They're listening to themselves. They're not listening to his voice or they're not looking through his eyes. And so we've got a long way to go in order to try to convince people <laughs> uh, who they are in Christ because Christ is the one who took us back into that beginning point and said, this is, this is the starting point, not Genesis 3, Genesis 1. That's the starting point. If we can get back there, we might be able to uh, save our little home, our little planet here, our land and our mother.